Whoa, 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 whoa. Wow! What's up? It's me, um, Asby. And today we're gonna do some Krita God Mode custom settings. What is God Mode, you ask? Well, I don't know. It's just something I made up just to go faster in Krita and increase your workflow. Why do you even need to go God Mode? It's because if you don't, then you're gonna be a slow poke and you're gonna take like five days to complete your artwork. Mm -hmm. So, but on a more technical standpoint, it's uh, configuring our shortcuts uh, and then optimizing our uses with the dockers. So, how do you actually go God mode? Uh, you don't. That's just kidding. So, first off, you want to make sure you have the latest version of Krita. You do that. So, you go to help, boop, and you go to about Krita. And beep, 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 down right there. It says 5.0.6, which is the, in fact, the latest version up to this video's date. So yeah. And you wanna make sure you start off with a clean slate. So if you mess some things up while you're like experimenting or something, like, ah, I don't know how to fix this stuff. It looks all weird, ah. Then you could go up here to settings and reset all settings in the bottom. And then click yes. Okay, so if you're super beginner, and I'm gonna show you how to set up a file and stuff. So click new file or control N, the shortcut. And I recommend this dimension 2480 by 3508 by your mom. I mean, uh, the most important part is 300 resolution because if it's lower then it's gonna look ugly as hell like myself. So create, oops, hold on, let me, let me create a new one because I don't like it to be vertical. And then you could also switch whether it's flat or tall. This is flat, so create. Nice. All right, so first I want to get this out of the way. Click settings, um, configure Krita, window, and make sure enable high DPI is disabled because if it's enabled then it's going to randomly resize your windows and stuff like that. Also you need to make sure you have the latest version of your driver so if you have like a Wacom tablet you need a Wacom driver and if you have a Helion tablet then get a Helion driver. You should already have installed that since it's like the first parts of your setup but if you don't know how just look it up on YouTube trust me bro it's not that hard. I only know one thing harder than that. My boss. Okay, so let's move on to some tips that you could use without having to change any settings first because I know these help me a lot too. So the first one is using space plus clicks to drag. So space and then I'm moving around with my stylus. Nice. Okay, and the second one is shift plus uh left click drag to change your brush settings uh your brush size so make sure you're on this tool the free brush and then shift click drag whoa that's cool that saves a lot of time instead of having to press the bracket keys those are lame okay for faster zooming in and out you control and then space and then move it around and drag it your stylus so i'm going to the right and then zooming in and then nice and if you ever get lost around your canvas and whatever you can't find this stuff you click the number two on your keypad and it brings you back up perfectly fitting your window. Nice. Oh, let me delete that. Another cool thing is you could use control U to bring up a cool window called the color adjuster or something. So control U. Oops. Control U. And you could change the color, which is the hue. You could change the saturation, which is, uh, well, saturation, <laughs> lightness, obviously it's racism. All right, nice. Okay. It looks like a grape now. <laughs> or an apple. Oof. Okay, so now I want to move around the windows and docks that we have over here just to make it cooler. So put this color selector on the left. Make it big enough so you won't have trouble adjusting your colors. And uh, it looks about right. Oh, slightly bigger. Okay. And put, uh, grab this tool menu through this giant rectangle. 
and put it on the top right because we're not going to use those that much. We're only going to use them if we forget something, a shortcut, or want to explore the tools. So now we could get this docker, the tool options, and put it on the left. So click on the tool options name, drag it out, and then I like to put it on bottom and keep this whole color picker on the top. I would make your layer dock longer because then you could see more and it's kind of annoying when you have to scroll through all of them. Also, a cool thing about Krita is that it has a recording docker and it exports a bunch of, it could export your speed paint if you really want to. So we get it by going to settings, uh, dockers, and it's right here, the recorder. So we'll put it on bottom of, over here, which is pretty nice because we're not going to see it much. All we need to show is a record and export. I recommend checking record automatically because then if you forget to, like a Dumbo, you could always just rely on it being recorded already. So yeah. Um, you have to set it up first a little bit, so I recommend looking it up on YouTube because I'm not qualified to teach you. I don't have my master's in Krita yet, so yeah, this is what shows up when you haven't configured it correctly. But look it up on YouTube, it's cool. We're also going to turn on our stabilizer while we're talking about the tool options. So over here on this window, well, make sure uh, the free brush is selected like we've been using and change this basic basic hoe to stabilizer uh, sample count just put it around 10 I don't really know what it does but well, this part is going to depend whether your computer is like good enough or not like sometimes if you put the delay too low I, I think it makes it run slower but mine should be fine just do yours how you please because you're the boss make sure to like and subscribe for this great bro and now we're going to bring out something called the overview and it basically just shows a tiny picture of our whole workspace or whatever. To do that, we go to settings, dockers, and then overview right here in the middle. So we're going to move this to the top left. Basically what this does is it just shows us a tiny image of what we have drawn so far. And I like to keep it there because if we're too zoomed in, then we're not, we're not going to see really these details that I put over here. Seeing the overview makes it... So we could actually check whether our details are like affecting the whole canvas. We could also use it to zoom in, flip it, but we're going to have a shortcut for that later. Another cool part about going sickle mode is all the brushes that you could activate. So I don't know if it comes by default, but sometimes I think these are unchecked and it doesn't give you all the brushes. So if you see any of these are light gray, click on them so I could turn them the darker gray color and it gives you more brushes over here Eww, look at all that dude for free so I like to make the icon smaller and I do that by clicking these three uh, lines horizontal lines and making the icon sizes pretty small because then you can see more brushes okay now we're gonna get into the coolest part I think the shortcut rebinds and it's my favorite part because they're super configurable but I don't want to waste your guys' time showing you all of the shortcuts and just me changing them by hand so I'm going to give you a list of what's to change and I'm going to give you an example on how to change it. First, I'm going to show you how to change the mirroring, which is when I do this, we're going to make that a shortcut. So go to settings, configure Krita, and keyboard shortcuts. So we're going to look up mirror view. And you see how this is M? <laughs> That's thinking, because if you look on your keyboard, your finger does not reach all the way over there comfortably if you have your hands on control Z uh, the whole time, which is to undo. So we're going to keep it somewhere closer. So let's choose. Uh, we have to click on custom and click control F. So once this is just saying that we have some random ass thing set to control F, but it, it looks like it's not really relevant. So reassign cringe okay so now we should have it set to control F nice I'm clicking control F I'm gonna go ahead and pause it and meet you back when you've done all of them so alright I'm gonna de demonstrate how all of the shortcuts you did are super useful so mirroring control F make sure there's no mistakes because we make a lot as artists including being born so 
control F make sure no sides are our eyes aren't getting used to the nastiness. So W is the contiguous selector tool, which is it picks it selects the same colors that are like together slash contiguous or whatever that means. Sounds like some weird band or something. We could also use the lasso tool, which is now set to Q. Uh, you can make a specific shape. So if you if you want to have like some nice shading over here, then we could select that part. Uh, let me select my brush tool because I guess it don't. Okay. Nice. You see, you get some nice shading. And then we could also use the bucket tool if we want to change. I guess background. I set it to F. That's ugly. Okay, so that was the bucket tool, and now let's try growth selection. So we could have this selected, and we could increase the size of it. And this is useful for like creating outlines and uh, drop shadows. So if you want to select, oops. So if you're selecting a stem, and if you want to make it thicker or something, you can click G since we mapped it, and increase it by five pixels. You could change the size, the or the the ruler or whatever, but who cares? And you see it increases border. Oop. So let's fill that in. You could also make it feathered with H. So let's click 10 just to demonstrate it. It's gonna look like it increased, but it's gonna be softer on the edges, which is nice. It almost looks like a glowing effect. I use that for drop shadows and glowing effects. Obviously, new layer is new layer. Beep. Let's put a smiley face on this sucker. He's looking wholesome 100, right? I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so you might have seen on the screenshot, it says brush preset 0, 1, and 2, set to EAS. And basically, that refers to a script of Krita, a Python script, which is an add-on, which you get um, access through tools scripts and then 10 brushes sounds like a song or something okay set e a s but you can go back and set more if you want i just use three because i get annoyed if there's too many so i put the eraser on e e for eraser and e girl a for i don't know but it's the one i use the most and then we have just this basic round brush, but yeah, this is all your preference. Just make sure to activate the disactivate this, the top one, because then it's gonna switch them around if you press it twice. So, okay, okay. So we have pretty. We're almost almost done. We just need to do one more thing, which is I feel like is the best part. It's kind of awesome. And drum roll. It's the color picker. Which is this? You might have seen me use it, but it basically just makes it easier to choose a color. It's so much easier than going and putting your mouse over there on the top and then bringing it back slowly. Oh god! Yeah, you you could use it to do a lot of other things, but it's mostly for the color picker because a lot of the other stuff is um, set to shortcut already, like this mirroring and the zooming. So yeah. I'm show you how to make it bigger and how to activate it. Um, if your stylus has a right click button or if you could change it through your driver, then go ahead and use that if you want. But I'm gonna show you how to activate it through just a normal shortcut. Because usually it would only let you use a left mouse click or a right mouse click to activate it. But I'm gonna show you how to bypass that. So, transition. Okay, so go up here to where it says settings go to configure Krita again and go to canvas input settings we're going to go to the show pop-up widget so these are my custom settings and we're going to show you how to achieve that so restore boop and okay this is you have a clean slate now so click on add shortcut double click it and then click on this tiny triangle this illuminati triangle boop and click on key combination Click input and double click it. Boop. Go to key and then click it once. And this is where we could put the input of what we want. Just I usually should set it to alt, but I think Z would work too. So, but I like alt better because Krita doesn't use that for any. So, uh, click it once and then alt, like an alt girl. Hello. 
I do that. Check out my speed paint. So click OK. So as you can see, I click Alt and then it shows up. It shows up where my mouse is. It teleports behind you. Yeah. But as you can see, it's kind of small and that's what we try to prevent by making this big. So we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to change it again. So go to Configure Krita and then go to this bottom where it says pop-up palette. I feel like that looks aesthetic, bro. Like I want to make that little picture. So set it all the way to the maximum because why not? You want the big booty color picker. And I just put it at half because the brushes, we already set it to the custom A and S keybinds. So click OK. Okay. And honestly, that's pretty much it. You could go God mode now. I kind of demonstrated it, this potential absolute sicko mode ultra instinct through my recent speed paint so go check that out if you want an example on how flow and smooth down it makes your work process and just go ahead and experiment and see what works best for you but i think this is an excellent starting point and yeah the only thing i've probably changed is like i'd set r to different rotations but i haven't figured out how to do that so yeah make sure to subscribe all right, bye, all right, let's have a peace out, homie, home dog, absolute homaroo, absolute friendo, boko, chingaroo, chingona.